Hey, Kent Kentley here for a check-in and to finish um, the gathering of gargoyles, finally. Um, sorry it's been so long. I had some extra time today. Uh, I don't know when this is actually going to get posted, because as much time as I have to record, I have less time to upload. But here we are finishing the book. Ariel has solved the uh, Riddle of Ravenna, or at least this part of it. And now she and the Heron are talking about how Ariel came to be a slave. The vital lines, the arrows and the wands, they still meant nothing to her, nothing. Frustration seized her to have come so close. She held the clean seed in her hand. Turning now in dismay, she flung it into the fire, then drew the rest of the heart-shaped seeds from her pack and flung them in, the, and flung them in as well. I do not know why I have been keeping these, she said, or why the keeper bade me, bade me save them. But the words were no more than half spoken when the gargoyles hooted and howled. First the raptor, then the others sprang past her into the flame. Ariel cried out, starting forward, then stopped herself, for she saw they stood as she had done and did not seem to feel the heat. The gargoyles' collars began to melt, the brass running down their gray hides like golden blood. But the silver pins that held the bands were not melting. Instead, they were growing bright with the heat, and the collar, then the collars were gone, dissolved. The gargoyles shook their heads, and six silver pins flew, falling like glowing stars upon the ground beyond the bowl. The apricot seeds floated upon the molten treasure and did not burn. They had begun to swell like grain and broth. Each gargoyle took into its mouth one seed, each now the size of two doubled fists, and exactly the shape of a gilded heart. The scent of ambergris rose on the night. The gargoyle swallowed them whole without chewing, then lapped at the running silver as though it were milk. Ariel saw them beginning to change, their limbs altering, their fur and their feathers growing sleek, their pebbly hides or scales lay smooth. Then Grayling came down from the bowl, stepping from the fire, and was no longer Grayling, but a black she-wolf with, with silver throat and belly and legs. Burn a lawn, whispered Ariel. I am she, the lawn replied, and we are the ones you have sought. Catwing followed, a winged panther, pale with shadowy silver spots. Zam... Zambulon, said Ariel, the white witch overthrew us one by one, using her sons, the pale cat said. A great stag, all color of bronze, with eyes and hooves and antlers of gold came forth. Mooncalf, cried Ariel, then caught herself. Persilon, she took our hearts and put collars on us to strangle our strength and our thoughts and our speech, he said. A copper-colored paradise bird with a snake's tail, dark green, emerged. Eel bird, said Ariel. Everlon. But you have given us new hearts, she said, new blood, and taken the witch's collars away. A long-limbed, winged salamander that looked almost man-like came forth. His hide was black as Aaron's skin, all speckled with reddish spots. Ranelon, said Ariel. The world is not lost where we will live, he said. We will gladly go with you to Isterness to serve as steeds against the witch. Ariel felt buoyed up, breathed in the night. A deep joy began to well in her, infusing her. I have found them, she thought. I did not fail, and the Lorelei is not yet won. Catching movement from one corner of her eye, she turned and saw Irolaf standing in the temple door. His face seemed haunted in the flame's pure light. He stared at her as if he did not know her and at the lawns. She saw the duro now, too, kneeling beside one of the silver pins. Still it glowed. He tapped it with the blunt side of his pick, shaping it. His strokes became surer and more expert as the glowing pin flattened, razor-edged. Strange metal, that, he murmured, very hard and keen. Ancient silver, I think they call it. No mortal fire could melt it, they say. Hot enough now, though to reckon one might make arrowheads of these. The last of the lawns emerged from the fire, a tawny griffin formed like a, gri like a griff falcon before and a great cat behind. Terralon, laughed Ariel. She felt heady now, flushed with triumph. All things seemed possible. We must hold a council of war in Isterness, the griffin said. 
But there are the free lawns yet to be gathered, said Bernalon. Marilon and Penderlon and more, the white bird upon the knotted tree rose. I will bid them come to you in Istranus, she answered. Then spreading her wings, she sailed over the cliff's edge, away from over the steeps. Ariel gazed after the line of her flight, ghost pale against the night-shadowed sh hills. Haste, haste, the bird of paradise said. We too must fly. Ariel drew a little away, reined in her exult her exultation now. There is a young girl in Perth, she began. I promise to return to her. The witch has already called her son's home, the panther warned. There will be war. We must make plans to assail her, and soon, Persilon added, before the white witch steals another babe to give her seven dark angels to give her seven dark angels again. Irilath had come down from the temple porch. Ariel could feel him in the darkness behind. The steady cling cling of the Duro's hammer making weapons fill the night. Irilath halted. Ariel turned and drew back, startled, for the prince was holding out his hand. Come, Ariel, he said. Our task has only just begun. We must return to Istranus and hold a conclave of the lawns. Slowly, Ariel went to him, eyeing him carefully, for still he gazed at her, as though she were some strange, astonishing thing. There was blood in her hair where Durna's spindle had struck him. There was blood in his hair where Durna's spindle had struck him. Without thinking, she reached to touch it, and to her astonishment, he did not draw away, nor turn from her gaze. We must go by way of Purs, she found herself telling him, for Roshka and Aaron are waiting for me. Climb on my back, the griffin said, and Irilath lifted her, setting her between the Terralon's great buff-colored wings. Ariel searched her husband's face, but he was not looking at her now, though he no longer shrank from her. Go on, she heard the Duro say pausing a moment in his work. Just leave me my just leave me a mount and I'll follow you as soon as I have finished these. The arrowheads gleamed silvery white. The panther of Zambal went and sat beside Talb. The little mage's hammer rang. Irilath sprang under the back of the paradise bird. Ariel sat watching him. Perhaps you cannot love me yet, she thought, but at least we can work together now until our task is done. Afterwards, who knows? The griffin rose into the air, followed by the salamander, and the prince's cockatrice. The wingless stag and wolf flung themselves over the cliff, plunging in bounds no mortal creature could have made. Ariel gripped her mount's soft, close fur, and they wheeled away over torchlit orm, the sky spanning vast and starlit before them. They sped eastward toward Easterness. And that is the end of A Gathering of Gargoyles, which I liked a lot more than um, The Dark Angel. And I look forward to reading you The Pearl of the Soul of the World, which is the final book in the series. Uh, whenever someone asks for it, I'll jump it up in the queue. Otherwise, um, yeah, it'll wait there until somebody gets excited enough to hear me read it. I will see you in the next book.